I'm Freddie. I'm going to trap some gophers today. <laughs> Tell us what you've got in your hand, Freddie. This is a gophinator trap. It's an all stainless steel upgrade of the traditional, probably the 50 year standard Maccabee trap that most people used forever. Um, that Maccabee trap got maybe pushed out of the, the limelight by the by the cinch trap when that came on 15, 20 years ago. But this is a really nice trap in that it takes the Mac, simple Maccabee design and translates it into an all stainless steel construction. It doesn't rust, corrode, or deteriorate with time. Okay, so this is the, the Gopinator trap completely set ready to put in a hole. I've got it tied to a wire, tied to a pipe. I put the pipe down. I can always see the pipe in the field. I know where my traps are. The gopher doesn't pull it down the hole. It's great. But so this is completely set and I want to demonstrate how to set it. So I'm going to unset it. So I'm going to pretend I'm a gopher. And I basically push my way through here and it's off. And uh, okay, pause maybe. So this is the gopher trap once it's been sprung looks like this it's kind of a confusing mess of wires first thing you do is you release the spring this is this coil spring okay so this spring once the trap is sprung it looks like that and to release the tension you just unhook this little this little spring and so this spring also controls the arm and so you open up the trap so the neck of the trap is open and you lift this arm up. And the funny thing about this is it doesn't fit if you just lift it straight up. It doesn't go through there. It only goes through if you run this stick through on the diagonal. It's just short enough to pass through that gap. And so now you've got it up here. You take that jaw, open it up a little bit, and put that little leg over the top of the jaw to hold it down. And then you put the trigger over the end of the of the leverage stick and so that holds it so now you can you can turn this and if I had this released if it was completely released if I did this it would just it would just turn the, the head but I'm pinning it down boom holding that down holding that down I hold this down so I don't accidentally set it off in my hands and then I take my fingers turn it or spin it around like that and it's got a, a bit of tension in that spring sometimes it's tough if you're if you're not grabbing it in the right way sometimes it's difficult but if you reach around the back and pull it you're kind of pulling in the right direction and it's and it's pretty easy to get it onto that hook it around the shaft here so then you let that go and that's ready to catch a gopher so here's this, the trap after it's been sprung if you don't have a gopher in it anymore you pull the gopher out it looks like this and it's a little bit confusing and it's also kind of counterintuitive because this is the important thing but but it's not really engaged unless unless you open that jaw up and you put this little leg over the top of the jaw and then this little u flips down and it holds it in place so now when I turn the spring, it doesn't do anything. And I'm going to release that and show you what it does if it's, if it's not hooked up right. It, it just doesn't do anything. You can do this and it's just a mess. It's a mess of wire and it's really frustrating. And people get really angry at this trap. But but little leg over that, the U over that. And then you grab this spring from the back side. You reach your hand around underneath, grab it with your forefinger. My fingernails are pretty dirty too. I've been digging in the dirt. Um, and hook that on. And so I'm going to do that again because this is part people complain this trap is a little bit hard to set because its spring has got a lot of tension on it. So you reach around the back side, so your arms like this, and then you can use your whole body to to leverage that in place. And this this little leg right here is what controls the trigger. Oops. Very good. Yeah. Okay, so finding a gopher hole, you want to find a gopher hole with really fresh dirt. With the, the, the freshest dirt you can find, it'll often be more moist underneath than it is up top. And then if it's not already open, you take your shovel and you, you dig down after it a little bit. Oh, well, it's pretty dry down there. It's, it's, 
still April, right? Oh, I can tell. Okay, so then you end up at the bottom of a hole, and there's a, often a feel around that perimeter. It's not always evident where the hole is, where the opening is, but this is soft dirt in here, and I'm just following that. And so I follow that as far as I can reach. I can't go any farther, so I'll just dig another spoonful. Still chasing, and I'll dig as far as I need to go. You know, and at some point, usually they plug their hole, you know, a few inches. Sometimes it's a foot. Sometimes it's sometimes it's even more. I don't mind going a foot. Yeah, look at that. It went way down and it came back up, and now it's open. Kind of took a turn to the side. Yeah, a big turn. Yeah. Actually, it branched. It went this way too. Oh yeah, in both directions. Not sure if we'll be able to see anything, but hey. So we've got the set trap. It's ready to go. I've got the hole excavated out. It actually went two directions: out this way and that way. And I'm going to set the the bottom, kind of the most difficult one first. And first thing I do is I hold by trigger. This is the trigger. Gopher hits that with his nose, pushes it this way, releases this, this spins up, that closes, pinches the gopher, and he dies. Hold that down with your thumb. You don't want that happening to your finger. And 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 another cautionary thing, this, when it spins around, has a lot of power and it's a little sharp hook, and so it can rip your skin apart too. So if you hold this down, there's no chance of this trap accidentally going off while you're sticking it in the hole. So I hold that down while I'm setting it. And I just kind of work it into the hole and some, and there's, I think there's five different sizes this trap comes in. I've used three of them. There's a very small one that is suitable for a real small gopher and the huge ones for those main runs. And that's pretty good. That's in there. I'm going to pull the trigger back. You don't have to do this, but and it's dangerous to do it too far if you if you accidentally pull the trigger back too much it'll go off and damage your finger but but pulling the trigger back a little bit puts it on, sets it on a hair a hair trigger and it'll go off easier so that's one trap <clears throat> and this one I'll just turn this one and set this again Good. Um, the deeper in the holes, the better. These are not very deep. I can't get very deep in that, those things. And I like to put, they say you don't need to bait these, but I always have better luck when I bait a trap. These are kind of rotten apples from last year's harvest. You're supposed to get rid of these and throw them out of your orchard. But if you didn't get that memo, they make great gopher bait. And so set that in here. The gopher will bring his nose up, trying to, trying to get that, that apple, even when it tastes like a little bit like applesauce vinegar, and um, push the lever, set off the trigger, and he's yours. Yeah. So after you set the trap, you've got the bait is optional. Works better with the bait. But after you've got the bait in there, trap set, leave the hole open. Don't cover it up and the gopher will come and investigate the open hole. He, they sometimes will try to fill the hole and that's a good thing because they'll start pushing dirt in there and they'll set off the trigger and it'll get them. So, and then you just wait. Well, when the traps are set this shallowly, you can actually see from the outside whether the gopher's been caught, but normally you can't tell with the gopher trap until you pull it out. But, you know, that, and that's the benefit of the sink trap. This is. Oh yeah, so coming back the next day, we take a look. And oh yeah, here we go. There's a gopher. It's a pretty good kill. Got him in the middle. 
not too terrible to take the gopher out. Grab the trap right here with your thumb and forefinger. Remove that spring. Take that spring and spin it around. That opens the jaws. And I like to put my gophers back in the hole and bury it up. What? Why? Well, um, gophers don't like dead bodies in their burrows, and so it, it will move the gophers, yeah, another gopher. It will dissuade a gopher from using that burrow in the near future. They also make good fertilizer. You can put them under your trees. But coyotes smell them and dig them up. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. There's a cinch trap. And the way you would set it is um, it has several pieces. Basically, you want to first go this direction and then that direction and then back up. So it's like three sides of a square. So this piece is the hardest and you want to make sure since it snaps back that way, you want to keep your hand on the side of the trigger piece so you don't get injured. You get this back here and then you put the second piece over the first piece and then the third piece going that way and now you push the trigger down. And now it's set. So um, a few things to be aware of. You want um, you want the pieces to go as far as possible to make the trigger as short as possible. And this is especially important in the last part. You want this piece, this uh, right now horizontal piece, to be pushed up against that. And then you want the last piece to be there. And then after you set this, so, so now the gopher is going to stick its nose there and then this will close and break its neck. So once you have the set into a hole, as, as you handle it, you put it in the safest position, but once you set it into a hole, it'll look like this. The, this will probably be about where the ground is, and this is um, out of the ground, as you could see. You want to set this to be as short of a trigger as possible, so you want to back this up until it can almost trigger on its own. So can you see how, how short of a trigger this is? Um, this is, this is the key. This makes the trap really, really sensitive. Um, and it does happen that as, as I'm working around it, it gets, um, set off sometimes. Um, so then as you set it into the hole, into the tunnel, say like this, this will be sticking out then most people so the tunnel is going this way and it's open here and then some people will set a, a warning flag um it's just a piece of wire with a, a flapping piece of fabric so the key is to not set the flag in the same direction because if you set the flag in the same direction then you have a colorful um, flag uh, flopping around in the wind that even a gopher with its poor vision can see the color and movement and and be more alarmed so you want to set your flag to go to go like this where the flag is um, flapping out of sight of the gopher so when you caught a gopher the trigger will be up in the air like this. Okay. And if you didn't catch it, um, but the trap just set off on its own or a gopher tripped it, it'll be like this. So this is how you can just, if you set a bunch of traps, you could just walk by 
and see oh there's probably a gopher in there or there isn't a gopher or in this position nothing has happened yet so sometimes these pieces can get caught so like when i set the first piece i need to check that this can move because sometimes it does get caught and then the same thing goes here it doesn't take much strength to hold to hold it um So just, just check that it can move and then have this go as far that way as possible. And then once again, have this go as far that way as possible.